Have you ever found yourself asking, what the heck is the future perfect tense in Latin? Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at recognizing, forming, and translating the future perfect tense in Latin and in English. You might never have heard of it, or you might know that it exists, but not really understand how it works. Either way, this video is for you. Before we start, I want to give you this free PDF, a complete overview of Latin verbs. It has all the tables of endings for Latin verbs in all tenses, moods, and voices. It'll be really useful to have to hand while translating because you can look up any verb ending you need. So go and download it now from the link in the description below. It's a really valuable PDF to have. Now let's get to it. The future perfect tense in Latin. This is a really interesting and not very common tense in Latin, but it is important to know, mainly for speeches and things like that, but especially because of how it relates to the verb to be. So, what the heck is the future perfect tense? Well, it's what's called a completed action in the future. Basically, it's something that will have happened by a certain point. This is also how you translate it into English, an action that will have happened. For example, by next week, I will have taken my driving test. Or, tomorrow you will have seen the news. Now, because the future perfect is a completed action in the future, that means it actually has more in common with the perfect and pluperfect tenses than you might expect. Just like the two completed past tenses, the future perfect is formed using the third principal part, the perfect stem. Now, top tip, in your dictionaries and glossaries and vocab lists, you should have all the principal parts written out for you, and it's well worth taking the time to learn them. It does take longer, but you won't be faced by seeing a really irregular verb if you know all the ways it can change. So it is important for forming the perfect, the pluperfect, and the future perfect. So do make sure you learn them when you can. So back to forming the future perfect, you take the third principal part, the perfect stem. Take off the I ending, because that's the perfect ending, and add on these endings instead, depending on the person doing the action. Ero, eris, erit, erimus, eritis, erint. With portare as my example, I take the third principal part, portawi. Then I take off the I, which is a perfect ending, and add my future perfect endings instead. I get these, portawero, portaweris, portawerit, portawerimus, portaweritis, portawerint. Respectively, these mean I will have carried, you will have carried, he, she, it will have carried, we will have carried, you will have carried, plural, and they will have carried. Now the beady-eyed among you may have noticed that these endings are the same as the simple future tense of the verb to be. The use of the verb to be is really common in Latin, not just in compound verbs like possum, but also in the pluperfect tense, so a ram or ass around on its own is the imperfect tense of the verb to be. Now if you want to go into the most irregular verb, well, in Latin, but also in basically any language. Um, but if you want to go into it in Latin, then make sure you keep an eye out on my channel for the video that's coming up soon. To be or not to be. Yes, it's very cliched, but it makes sense. Check that out on my channel when it arrives. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get a notification when that video is out. Anyway, let's have a look at some examples in Latin. As usual, I have the vocab down the side for you, which is split into verbs as well at the bottom. Um, there's less for you to check out this time. Uh, I just wanted you to focus on the endings of the verbs rather than bombarding you with lots of vocabulary. So you've got the normal vocab, which has nouns and numbers and connectives um, in one section. And then there's the verbs at the bottom. Don't forget to keep looking out for that bold third principal part that I've got for you. That's the one you need for this exercise because that's the one that the future perfect is formed from. I've also got the future perfect person endings in the bottom left corner to help you out and a little reminder of how to translate it. So if you want to have a go at these on your own, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm going to go through them. So for number one, crass puella duos anos in urbe habital wear it. Always look for the verb first. In this case, it's at the end of the sentence, as it most typically is. Habit or wear it is my future perfect tense ending, a third person singular. He or she will have lived. So now I know it's a he or she or it, so I need a nominative singular to match. I have puella and that fits, the girl. 
so she's in charge of my sentence. Then I add in any other information. Cress means tomorrow. This explains my future perfect tense. Then duos anos is a temporal phrase meaning for two years, and in urbe means in the city. If I put all that together, the sentence means tomorrow, the girl will have lived in the city for two years. For number two, her die decem dies in urbe manserimus. Again, I look for my verb first. Manserimus is a first person plural future perfect verb. It comes from maneo, so it's quite irregular in that third principal part, the perfect stem. So it means we will have stayed. In urbem, we have again, same as the last sentence, in the city. Hodie means today, and decem dies is another temporal phrase for 10 days. Altogether, today, we will have stayed in the city for 10 days. Three, milites nunc urbem keperint. This one is a classic Latin arrangement. Connectives are often the second word in a sentence, and here I have that with nunc. So you can translate that as now or by now. And the verb is at the end again, keperint. This is a third person plural future perfect. They will have captured. Again, that's quite irregular for the third principal part, so do make sure you learn them. They're really, really important. So they will have captured, and this means that I need a nominative plural to match my verb ending. So milites means the soldiers, they're in charge. So the soldiers will have captured. We know urban by now, the city. Altogether, the soldiers will now have captured the city, or now the soldiers will have captured the city. Number four, unum mensem puellam amawero. Again, I'm going to check my verb first to get as much information as I can, really get into the habit of doing this. Amawero is a first person singular future perfect, so I will have loved. Now, I don't need a nominative because I'm in charge, so that's fine. I need to find an accusative. Actually, I've got three in this sentence, so that could be quite tricky. But luckily, one is a number, unum, and one is a unit of time, mensem. So they make a temporal clause, which means for one month. Puellam is therefore my, my real, if you want to say that, real accusative, which means the girl. So verb, then accusative, then anything else, I get, I will have loved the girl for one month. Finally, number five, frustra hunk fecaritis. Fecaritis is an irregular verb again. Facio is the present uh, principal part. So the third principal part is very important to show me how this verb changes. Fakey is the perfect stem, so take off the I and add eritis for the second person plural future perfect ending. So this verb means you will have done or you will have made. I just pick which one makes most sense. Again, in this one, I don't need a nominative because you plural is my subject. So I already know who's in charge in this sentence. Hunk is my accusative, this. Then you add in anything else, frustra means in vain. So the sentence means you will have done this in vain. So that's the future perfect tense. Now let me know if you have any questions or problems in the comments. If you want to learn more about verbs in Latin, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't already, go and download that free PDF from the link in the description. It has all the endings for verbs in Latin for every tense, voice and mood. So it'll be really useful for looking things up. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Bambas Bat.